Good day, YouTube. 1MJ here, and welcome back. All right, Saturday morning here in Australia, and we can see that the markets are down. So just below $1.6 trillion. So into the 1.5. So really, can we hold this $1.5 trillion level is going to be the question. Look, the alts are getting absolutely hammered at the moment. Uh, they really are uh, not faring too well. But look, this is all part of crypto. You know, if you can't handle it, it's probably not the space for you. But if you're listening to this channel, obviously it is the space for you, or at least you're somewhat interested. Uh, and hopefully you've been here for at least a little while and heard enough, uh, you know, messages from people who've been in crypto for a while to not overly panic just yet. All right, Bitcoin dominance. Oh, look, it is climbing 43%. Nice. Uh, ETH dominance dropped a little bit. That's been at 18% down to 17%. And gas prices, single digits. The last time we saw gas prices in single digits was, I think, literally January this year, if not maybe even December. Now, again, the reason the gas prices are so low is because everyone's scared and they're basically, you know, panicking and selling out of their altcoin positions. And, you know, I never give financial advice. You know, you need to make your own decisions. And look, if you just can't handle the volatility, and particularly if you unfortunately got in at all-time highs, uh, and I bought... Uh, some things are pretty much their all-time highs, and I've watched them drop, you know, a lot. They're basically a third of the price of what I bought them at. Uh, I haven't panic sold them. I still believe in the projects uh, fundamentally, and so I'll just hold them until they eventually do go up. Or if they never do go up, then, you know, at some stage I'll have to accept the loss. But again, I, I fundamentally believe uh, in the stuff that I've bought. You know, will that turn out to be completely true? Who knows? We'll wait and see. All right, let's move on and have a look at, you know, how the market's doing at the moment. All right, so <laughs> it doesn't look great, does it? Uh, a lot of red over the seven days, a lot of red over the 24 hours, uh, and a lot of red in the one hour. So again, look, the market's down 2.2%. So that's not a whole lot. And look, the weekend is now upon us. So typically we see uh, a retracement over the weekend. So let's have a look. Has anything done well in the last 24 hours? We had any outliers? Chili's a little bit. Yeah, I've been getting notifications that Chili's has been sort of bouncing back over the last seven days. So that was pretty nice. Uh, Huobi, that's it. So two coins. Oh, no, well, that's a loss for Helium. <laughs> All right, I don't know how that made it up there. So Chili's are the one sort of outlier really in Huobi, just a tiny little bit. And then really, yeah, I guess we're gonna go into the losses now. What's been hammered the most? What has not fared well in the last 24 hours? In the top 100, all right, Thorchain, absolutely hammered. Synthetics Network, absolutely hammered. Uh, God, $8, you know, considering this was at, you know, I think $28 or something like that. So severely under uh, its old, old all-time high. Now, I still love Synthetics Network, and I am strongly considering starting to buy some uh, at these prices. But again, I'm not going to rush into too many alts at the moment. You know, I'm really more going to focus on Bitcoin and Ethereum because we really need to see a bottoming formation for you know the altcoins before we just jump back in. Now, I, I bought some alts probably a couple of weeks ago, uh, and some of them haven't done too bad, but generally a majority of them uh, are still getting hammered. And, you know, that's just the way it is. I still like the projects that I bought in, like chilies. I bought some chilies. Uh, that was one. I bought some Terra Luna. That was another. Uh, what else? Some Alpha Finance. And again, some of these have just been absolutely hammered. And, you know, that's the way it is. I still really like those projects. Uh, and we'll have to wait and see whether they're going to be able to make it through a bear market. I didn't throw thousands of dollars at them. It was literally, you know, less than 1% of my total portfolio into all of those things. Uh, I guess sort of to hedge my bets and, you know, try and hopefully have at least a couple of winners because that's the thing. I like the, the little old lady uh, investing strategy. You know, you throw a few dollars uh, at a number of things. Now, still do your research. Don't just randomly throw money at things. And you only really need one or two of them. So let's say, you, you know, you spread your money out over maybe, I don't know, 10, 15, 20, 30 different coins. 30 is probably a lot. But anyway, let's say you, you do that. If you only have, you know, two or maybe three winners, maybe even just one winner that does really, really well, it will make up for all the ones that didn't do so well. So I'm a massive fan of that. Now, again, 
I'm not saying grab your money and just throw it at you know 20 30 random things 20 or 30 might be too many really maybe just 10 or 15 or something uh, will be enough but again definitely focus predominantly on some of the bigger ones the more stable ones so bitcoin and ethereum uh, would be my uh, personal opinion never financial advice and then spread the rest out over yeah a couple of uh, different things and you know mix it up maybe a little bit in DeFi maybe a little bit uh, in layer two solutions maybe a little bit in the NFT space you know whatever it is you want to do that's the uh, method that I like but again most of my money is in Bitcoin and Ethereum that makes up the majority of my sort of portfolio all right so anyway yeah look Again, 15% and above for gains is really, really good. And 15% and above uh, is, you know, not, not so great. They're, you know, I don't want to use the word reasonable because that makes it sound like they're good, but they are reasonable size losses. So we've got a, re a lot of reasonable size losses here. So things are not looking great in the uh, market. And again, it's really the altcoins that are getting hammered. Because if we go back to CoinGecko, Ethereum not doing too bad. I mean, still getting hit a little bit, but it's still not as low as what it was. This was down at 2100 a little while ago. So, yeah. And again, look, even Bitcoin was down at 30 thousand i mean it went down to something like 20 sort of nine thousand something like that so they're generally holding not too bad but it is an overall downtrend at the moment so let's go have a look at the chart and the bitcoin chart the all important so again i showed this before on the rsi we had this decline happening so the rsi was just getting lower and lower but so that was bearish divergence but we had this bullish divergence happening at the same time so these lows were getting higher and higher and now the low has married up with this uh has gone a little bit higher sorry than the bearish decline now same thing on the macd we can see that you know when this flips bearish then it goes bullish bearish bullish bearish uh kind of sideways you know there was a small little flip there but then it went bearish again then it got bullish then it went bearish and it looked right here this is the one we were focusing right here it looked like it was going to go bearish again but it didn't it bounced and so we're still in this bullish trend so for me not all hope is lost now I'm gonna get rid of these I don't need these anymore and we can just focus on the chart all right so this is where we are and as we can see this is that upward channel and as long as we're in this upward channel we are still in a bullish channel and what can we see happening right here it is holding it just now look we could ever so slowly just keep creeping up over you know quite some time just keep bouncing in and around here and it means we are still in a bull market now if we break out of it to the downside we could still be in a bull market as well we've just broken this really bullish trend really we need to drop below for me 27,000 in Bitcoin and again not a wick we could have some random wick that comes you know severely down but gets bought uh, back up but really if Bitcoin goes under this and again this is where that line is that's the mark we've got to go over here there's a little bit of uh, sort of support and resistance there if we go below that then I'd be pretty happy to say all right we are definitely in a bear market how low we're going to go i have no idea but for me what i'm thinking is we probably stay inside this and if not we'll fall outside but it'll be a lot of sort of sideways chop and this could last for months literally months maybe to july uh, september who knows that is really what i'm thinking is going to happen again maybe we sort of stay in here and just keep slowly ticking up for a little while ticking up ticking up ticking up uh, but not really, again, this is the level everyone wants us to break, that kind of 42,000. So I think we could just, you know, keep bouncing just outside, back inside, back outside, back inside, and do this for quite some time. I mean, look, to break that, according to this, it could be till late July we could do that. And then really that would kind of be, you know, the mark where, again, it doesn't mean we're bearish, but that would really be kind of whether... We're going to stay within this channel or we're going to break outside of this channel so again i sort of see a lot of sideways chopping movement and even if it's slowly moving up this is still kind of sideways in the grand scheme of things because really anything from sort of you know let's say thirty thousand to sort of forty two thousand forty three thousand is sideways action even if it's going up uh 
but not breaking above that 42,000, it's sideways action. And again, even if it sort of starts to slowly come down uh, and go this way, it's still sideways action until it really breaks that kind of 30,000. And then again, particularly that kind of 27 and a half, $28,000 level sort of thereabouts is what I'm looking for. But again, I've gone over that a few times, but again, I, I don't know if you're new to my channel. If, if you are, welcome. Uh, thank you very much for uh, tuning in and uh, watching my video. Uh, please hit the subscribe and like button and the bell all icon. That would be really appreciated. All right, so let's move on. There's a couple of interesting stories. So Texas Senator claims people are flocking to Bitcoin because US is on the verge of an inflation crisis. Now there's, uh, it's definitely looking like things are getting more expensive at the moment. I mean, I'm even noticing that here in Australia for quite some time over the, uh, you know, the lockdowns and things like that, you know, fuel was quite cheap here in Australia, like seriously cheap. And now it's getting back to the prices now that the lockdowns and that are all sort of uh, slowing down here in Australia. We still have a few uh, in certain areas, but fuel prices are going up uh, and just, you know, the prices of lots of other things. I'm noticing that I don't have as much money as what I had uh, during uh, that kind of uh, lockdown period. So we're feeling the inflation here in Australia as well. Australian housing prices are continue to rise. They are seriously expensive. You know, Australia really is one of the lucky countries, but not when it comes to housing. We have one of the most expensive housing markets in the world. Literally, what we pay per square metre is right up there it's uh, unbelievable it's nearly impossible uh, to own a house uh, in Australia for the younger generation you know older generations they hold a majority of the wealth they can still do it but the younger generations they have uh, very little chance it's you know the average house price in Australia is about eight hundred thousand dollars in the bigger cities you know you move outside of the countries it can get a little bit cheaper but average price for you know bigger cities and that yeah, you're looking at about 800000 That's the average price. That is very, very expensive and very hard for families to try and uh, get into the housing market. So yeah, I have no doubt that people are moving to Bitcoin and I personally do believe that this is all a coordinated sort of FUD and I think there's going to be lots of stuff coming out from the IMF and all this saying, you know, they're going to look into all these heavy regulations and this and that on Bitcoin and possibly even trying to ban it and, you know, heavily try to influence El Salvador and all these other countries that will follow suit. It's just, as I spoke about yesterday, this is a small battle within a big war. Long term, Bitcoin wins. And I think even the governments know that it's the only source of, uh, you know, sort of the hard money that we have that will last. It literally is the only one. They can't go to anything else. They can go to gold and gold's still good. But the problem is we don't know how much gold there is. So even that can continue to just grow and we can continue to, you know, print more money if we continue to find more gold. Bitcoin is capped. It is literally the hardest money that, you know, mankind has ever known. They're not going to ban it. They're just going to try and find ways to fud it and keep it as low as possible so they can get as big a position as they can before they then simply say, yep, Bitcoin, you know, is completely legit. It's Bitcoin will not lose the war, but it probably will lose a couple of battles along the way. At the moment, it still seems to be holding and doing well. Uh, and this doesn't surprise me at all, particularly, you know, if the US dollar, which is the world reserve currency, is, you know, suffering from inflation, everywhere else around the world will suffer from inflation. That is simply how it's going to work. All right, block one, so uh, EOS have decided to pay a $27.5 million uh, settlement, uh, yeah, to make it go away. So, you know, these crypto companies that came out uh, back in 2017 and things like that, and this was the biggest one ever. They raised $4 billion, uh, the EOS blockchain, uh, and Dan Larimer then left, and sounds like it may have come back, may have come back to EOS and they've had all sorts of dramas, and now they're gonna pay $27.5 million. But again, let's have a look at that. $27.5 million, how much did they raise? Four billion, 27 million is nothing. That is literally like, you know, having to pay a 50 cent fine out of a hundred dollars. <laughs> it's, it's, it's nothing. But anyway, you know, hopefully now EOS can, you know, start to make a comeback. It really had a whole lot of fanfare early on and then just kind of went really, really quiet, but they've decided to settle. 
All right. So again, this is more of the stuff that's kind of going on. So there was a bill trying uh, going through uh, New York that was going to ban crypto mining for three years. Has failed. <laughs> it has failed. It got knocked down pretty quickly. So again, there's going to be lots of stuff going on. Multiple stories telling you, you know, again, New York's going to ban this and then there's going to be this heavy regulation and there's going to be all this and all that. But in the end it's not going to be anywhere near as bad as what people have tried to make it out to be. Don't get me wrong, regulation is coming. It's already sort of here. You know, ETFs aren't going to happen anytime soon. I don't think they're going to be pushed back a little bit. Uh, I think we're due to find out in a couple of days, June 16th, uh, the first, I think it's Van X proposal, uh, is supposed to be decided on. So I would say uh, it might get knocked back. Uh, and then others will get knocked back and it might take till later to this year, later in this year, or maybe even next year uh, before they finally get announced. But look, I could be wrong. But again, this just goes to show there's all these things happening. You know, we got senators coming out and, you know, making silly statements about, you know, one transaction on the Bitcoin network uses more power than one household would use in a month or something, I think she said. That's absolute rubbish and absolute garbage. One transaction on the Bitcoin network does not use even remotely close to that amount of energy. There's so many more things out there that use literally a hundred, if not a thousand times more energy than the Bitcoin network. Literally mining gold. I mean, the environmental impact. Number one, you're digging up the dirt. Number one, you're using uh, heavy machinery that you know runs on diesel and fuel and all the rest of it. Yeah. It's all this FUD and literally just garbage FUD as well that is going to be pumped out there to keep these prices as low as they possibly can. And these big players are just going to continue to buy it up. And that is literally what's happening. There's lots of on-chain data out there that's showing that, that you know there was a coordinated sell-off. And then as soon as the sell-off had happened and they had kind of liquidated all the shorts and got all the traders out, there's just these massive volumes uh, being bought up and yeah, just the price hasn't caught up with that. The price doesn't immediately happen after people start to buy. That's not the way it works. It's like a kettle. You start to boil a kettle and if you've got a clear kettle, you can watch inside. At first, nothing happens. You turn the kettle on, there's absolutely nothing. The water's just doing nothing. Electricity's running and it's starting to heat up. Then you see one little bubble. Then you see two little bubbles. Then you see a whole stack of little bubbles. But even when you see the bu the little bubbles, you're not hearing anything. Like the, the kettle's not whistling. It's not fully bubbling. It's just a few little bubbles. And then that pressure starts to build up inside. And then all of a sudden, you start to hear the whistle. And that's the same thing with the price um, you know, movement uh, in the markets. It's the same thing. It just kind of bubbles and bubbles and bubbles before it gets really overheated and then it starts to rocket up. And that's what I believe we will see. I just don't know exactly when it's going to happen. And, I, you know, again, it's never financial advice. I could be completely wrong. Uh, and, you know, maybe we are in a bear market, but it's just not looking that way at the moment. It really feels coordinated. Uh, and I think we're in an accumulation zone. Now, again, not great for the altcoins at the moment, particularly if uh, Bitcoin is sort of fairly volatile. If Bitcoin really kind of levels off at, you know, let's say 36,000 and it just stays there for a long time, altcoins are going to start to go mental again. But because Bitcoin's uh, sort of a little bit volatile at the moment, it'll jump up to sort of 39,000 and then, you know, it'll drop down to sort of 31, 32,000. And it's just all over the place. Uh, yeah, the, the market is really in a panic at the moment. So hence why people are panic selling uh, all of their altcoins. Well, not so much panic selling, but they are definitely selling. So that's what's going on in the market at the moment. And that's why for me, you know, I rarely ever sell my Bitcoin. If I feel like the market is getting a little bit overheated or I've made some really good profit I will sell a little bit of Bitcoin I've done it before I sold some at 47,000 and again I was kicking myself when I saw it go to 64,000 I thought oh, I sold too early but look profits profit and I only sold a little bit then all of a sudden we saw this correction uh, and Bitcoin came down to 30,000 I bought a bit at 39,000 a bit of I bought a bit at 34,000 and I was even lucky enough to get a little bit I think around 31 32,000 dollars so pretty happy with that. I also bought some more Ethereum. Uh, I sold Ethereum way too early. I sold it. I sold it. 
I sold it at 1700 and it never got back down there again. And I had to rebuy uh, at 2100 But look, I used profits that I uh, made from other coins. Bought some more Chainlink as well. Although, let's have a look. Where's Chainlink at at the moment? Uh, Chainlink, Chainlink, Chainlink. Uh, it's about the price that I bought back in. So, yeah, I'm sort of even on that. Maybe even at a slight loss. All right, let's move on. Dogecoin. So... Dogecoin price is down 20% since its Coinbase listing. So usually there's a pump and it's buy the rumor and then sell the news. So now that it's made it onto Coinbase, uh, we've seen that big sell-off. But look, that is also part and parcel with the entire market. So let's go have a look at Doge. Where is Doge? There we go. 31 cents. This was at 89 cents. It was nearly 90 cents. So it is literally about a third of the price uh, of its old all-time highs. Now, unfortunately, if we are in a bear market, this and all the other altcoins, and Bitcoin in general as well, can still go a whole lot lower. So be very careful if you're buying altcoins at the moment. I'm not saying don't. That's you know your decision. But just know that once upon a time, this was less than a cent. Less than a cent. It was literally a lot less than a cent. And it made it all the way up to 89 cents. So if we're going to have some kind of 90% correction, this is probably going to go back down to about a cent. Thereabouts. And again, that's you know a very rough estimate, but that's literally what will happen. Because most altcoins, they see 90 something, and it's more like 99, 97%. Uh, you know retracements so from you know less than a cent to 89 cents means it probably goes back to maybe half a cent or a cent if that plays out the same so yeah be very very careful but yeah coinbase listing not that long ago and again still seeing a massive sell-off all right so moving on so kraken they might go for an ipo so instead of mimicking Coinbase and going public through a direct listing, Kraken could choose the more traditional IPO method. Now Kraken is uh, re-evaluating its plans on how to go public next year after Coinbase's unimpressive performance. So it peaked up to like $430 uh, and last I heard it was around the $200 mark and looking like it might even go lower. So, you know... Still good for uh, Coinbase because they made all that money, but now their stock is worth a whole lot less. So instead of taking its competitor's method of a direct listing, Kraken could go down the initial public offering road. Yeah, it, it'll be very interesting whether they even do it because if we are in a bear market, I would say they'll probably hold off. I think they will definitely wait until things turn uh, and maybe wait another year. Because if we're in a bear, a bear market, they usually take around about a year to play out, thereabouts. Uh, but, you know, the problem at the moment is crypto is so big. And, you know, there's massive followings on YouTube and Twitter and, you know, TikTok and all sorts of things. The big companies, the big whales and all that, they know that. Trust me when I tell you, they watch this kind of stuff. Now, maybe not me so much, but all the big channels. So if the big channels are saying something's likely to happen, there's a good chance big players are going to try to counter that. They are going to trade in the opposite direction. And if, you know, you only really need a couple of big whales to get together and they can heavily influence the market. Now, you know, like BitBoy, for instance, he's got a really big following. He has openly come out and said that there are people actively counter trading him. So that is the problem. When you get so to a certain size, and you know, the biggest like BitBoy, you are being watched. And whatever you're saying, sometimes they're going to go with it. They're not always going to do the opposite because sometimes they want the momentum so they can really pump things up. But then when they're ready, they will simply counter trade and completely wreck people. So for me, I don't trade really. I do a little bit of swing trading here. I don't leverage trade. Uh, I've, I've never done every le le any leveraged trading. I don't know if I ever will. It just seems, yeah, too hard, and you just got to put too much into it. You know, you're constantly watching the market every five minutes to see where it's going. I'd rather just invest, do some research into projects, invest in them for the long term, and just sit back because the facts are. No one has ever lost money. Well, no, we've got to be careful how we say that. As long as they are invested in good projects that didn't do a rug pull or simply go away. But outside of that, if you invested in crypto 
and simply held or continued, even if you just held, say you bought at the top of the peak in 2017, doesn't matter what coin it was, as long as they haven't disappeared, they have gone to new all-time highs generally. Now again, generally, not all of them. So you still need to be careful. But things like Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, yeah, the bigger plays, and even some others, have well and truly gone above uh, their old all-time highs. Litecoin did. So that is really what I kind of focus on. And look, there's lots of new spaces coming in. This is the first time crypto has had kind of real adoption. 2017 was completely speculative. You know, it was all people who, you know, had no idea what they were really getting involved in. And, and I'll even say I was sort of part of that. I definitely did a lot of research before getting in. But even in 2017, outside of Bitcoin, I didn't really understand half the other altcoins that I was getting into. Uh, but look, I was lucky enough, even some of those altcoins have still done fairly well. Uh, but, you know, some of them uh, haven't quite gone above their old all-time highs. But Bitcoin, that's really the one, uh, and Ethereum, those two, they just continue to set new all-time highs. Every time we get uh, in a new bull market, they go higher again. So that's why, that's what I really focus on. Uh, and you just got to be careful with the altcoins. All right, last but not least, Ripple. So Ripple is proposing a major XRP ledger upgrade that the company says could unleash decentralized finance and smart contracts across the broader XRP ecosystem without decreasing XRPL's efficiency. Ripple plans to accomplish this through the use of federated sidechains, according to David Schwartz. The sidechains would be connected to the XRP ledger by federators, which are pieces of software run by parties who operate validators on at least one sidechain. Now, the sidechains would operate like their own blockchains, but XRP and issued tokens could move between them on the XRP ledger. So look, this, you know, sidechains and sharding uh, and being able to, you know, support tokens, uh, you know, from other projects, that really is where things, you know, being multi-chain uh, projects, uh, that really is a space. And look, even Ripple's getting on board, even though they've got this whole SEC thing going on. It'd be interesting to see if at the end of all this, you know, suddenly the SEC thing goes away. You know, there's talk of Ripple simply paying the fine and all the rest of it. But what happens if it was a big coordinated thing? Because again, the big governments know that this money system is failing. Like they do know, trust me. But what they're going to do is they're going to ride it out. They're going to kick it down the road as absolutely far as they can. They know it doesn't work. They know it's busted. They know it's failing. But they can continue to improve their position until the very last minute. And maybe Ripple slash XRP is the solution. And they are trying to suppress it as long as they can. Now, I'm not saying that's what's going on. That a complete conspiracy theory but wouldn't it be interesting if that's what happened and then all of a sudden everything is done and dusted the sec thing gets withdrawn and ripple you know slash xrp becomes the standard like everyone you know in the xrp army likes to say now again i, I did unfortunately uh panic sell my xrp and i sold it uh at a loss uh, and i'm kicking myself for doing that but yeah, wouldn't that be funny if that's what actually happens? Again, I'm not saying that is what's going to happen. That is total conspiracy theory. But uh, that would be interesting if, again, all this was kind of happening and in the background, then all of a sudden, bang, you know, ripple becomes the standard. And again, I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. All right, let me know, let me know your thoughts down below, whether you think this is all being sort of orchestrated at the moment. And do you believe that the governments know this system is failing and they're in the midst of trying to come up with something new? I definitely believe that is what's going on. Again, you know, that kind of new Bretton Woods moment, I think that is coming. Uh, I just don't know exactly how far away it is and what that solution will be. That is my belief that we are going to have another moment like that. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. If you're on that gain train at the moment, congratulations to you. You've outperformed the market. And I'll see you next time.